How to survive to your viva. My name is Dr. Ursula Schinzel and I'm going to present you how to survive to your viva. The, what is the, the overview of this uh, presentation is to find out what you want to know, to demystify what the viva is, and the general analysis of the viva questions and an example how it could like, likely look like. The viva, what do you want to find out about the viva? So, an overview. Why do we have a viva? What is its purpose? How does the process work? What are the examiners looking like? What will I be asked? How do examiners weigh the contribution of thesis versus viva? And can weaknesses in a thesis be compensated by a good viva? Can a good thesis be substantially undermined by a viva? Why have a viva? What is its purpose? It is a means of examination or assessment, a means of assisting the candidate's development, a ritual which welcomes the candidate into the academic community. Viva as an examination, so a provisional decision made already by the examiners before the viva. The viva only is a confirmation and um, extremely rare for candidates with a good thesis to fail and it's nearly uncommon for candidates with poor borderline thesis to pass through the good viva or at least they will never be admitted to the viva. Assessment, uh, purpose of, of the viva, authentication, context, understanding, defense, clarification, decision making. One thing to remember about the viva is that it's very rarely that it um, changes the opinion of the examiners. So, why have a viva, a viva if there is it's a means of helping the candidate's development? Uh, if there is a poor viva, it's a exploring ways in which it could be brought up to the standard. And good thesis is helping the candidates to explore ways of taking it further. For example, I'm going to the conferences to present it there. Application. How does the process work of a viva? Who is there? Why? How does it proceed? How long does it take? What are the possible outcomes and what happens after the viva? Who is there? Normally it's a board of examiners, at least two examiners. Normally it's one internal and one external. There's your supervisor and sometimes the head of the faculty. What's the role of the supervisor? Your supervisor normally um, is present, but uh, it's the examiners who will ask the questions. The role of the examiners, they prepare individual independent written reports on the thesis prior to the viva. They conduct the viva according to the regulations. The eternal examiner has particular responsibility for this and prepare a joint report on the examination for the university authorities. This report contains the principal regulation. Now, how does it proceed? Usually, you will make a presentation, a PowerPoint presentation of about 15 minutes. And then there will be questions and answers and uh, discussion. The general points you won't be expected to answer from memory. So take a copy of your thesis with you and be ready to use it. Have it marked. Yeah, areas of concern raised by examiners are rarely a sign of anything in particular, certainly not pass or fail. There will always be areas of concerns in any thesis. Questions you can't answer well aren't a sign. Be ready to concede a few points and strongly defend others. Possible results. So very rarely is that you are awarded a degree right away. Normally, um, the award is subject to specified minor corrections. That's the aim of the VIVA. Um, no award, that is very rare as well, because otherwise you should not have been admitted to the VIVA at all. Um, what has, happens after? So you are requested to uh, make your minor corrections. That's the most common outcome. You have six months or more or less um, to... Um, uh, proceed with he, these minor corrections. You can then, uh, this means that you revise your thesis and you resubmit it. Might be that there is more research ne necessary, more data gathering, but that is very rare. More common is issues with the conceptualization, with the structure, some um, errors, discuss options with the supervisor. Don't panic, situation can often be 
What are the examiners looking for? What can I expect to be asked? Every viva is different, but there are common keys. Conceptual clarity in design, conduct and analysis, appreciation of underlying theory, and uh, so it relates. Engagement with literature, grasp of methodology, coherence of argument, presentation of the thesis, compliance with academic protocol. It looks like a doctorate. These criteria only apply to the thesis and are hopefully confirmed. The anatomy of viva questions, A, B, C, A questions, so research problems, structure and coherent. So the D question should be the doctorateness, contribution to knowledge concepts. The anatomy of uh, viva questions should be more um, D questions. What does this mean for preparation? You have to prepare as if the viva will be successful. There is obviously no other way. Prepare hard for the questions, the doctorateness. What is the doctorate all about and how does your work qualify as doctoral? What is your contribution to knowledge? Be very clear on this and answer these questions in your thesis. Remember, balance of questions depends on the thesis. Unsuccessful candidates largely fail to answer the hard viva questions in your thesis. Now, we reconstruct um, the viva, the viva questions, for example. What is the most important contribution of your work to the field of cross-cultural research, for example? What is the most important contribution to knowledge of your work? Why do you think you have made a novel contribution and what is it that makes it novel? Why was Hofstede, for example, more appropriate for your subject than the other modeling approaches mentioned in your survey? What does the term UAI mean, for example? Tell us what really happened when you asked that question from your interview. Can you give an overview of previous work by your research group on cross-cultural research, for example. So, bearing all of that in mind, why did you decide to go down the specific path that you did? Can you describe the most important finding of your research in sentence? From the dissertation, there are clearly inconsistencies in some of the experimental data used to generate and calibrate the model. How does this affect the accuracy of your model or the confidence that you have in it? If you had another chance, what would you have changed about your project and why? Why did you want to do a doctorate? What benefits has your study brought you as an individual and a professional? And would you do it again? The Viva Reconstruction Summary of Key Points. Listen and then answer the question that was actually asked, especially when it's broad and contextual. Remember. I did versus I discovered. Focus your answers more on the letter. This will guide you. Remember, your examiners don't know everything. When we remind you, you are the world expert in your specific topic. Actually, we mean it. Don't undermine yourself, but don't overstate your case either. You are normally asked to reflect on what you have learned. So, the questions are about process and not product how you went about the work, not the work itself. Remember, what alternatives did you consider and why is yours the best? Remember, give the concepts behind the facts, what you now understand from what you found. You need a convincing justification of your approach, why your approach is better than possible alternatives. The examiner's motivations thought process so examiners generally want candidates to pass, but they have standards to maintain. They have a good idea of the likely result before the viva. This doesn't mean it doesn't make a difference, but perhaps not as much as you might think. A big part of their role is quality control, checking that the work is your own and that you understand it. The types of questions depend on the thesis. The best preparation for the viva is the thesis know your research. Thank you for your attention.